In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to take a look at some new advanced controls for speeding up or slowing down a video clip for users of PowerDirector 365. They've enhanced the tools and we'll showcase those in this tutorial. What I have on the track, number one, is a simple clip of a couple of ducks walking on the grass. And we'll use that as our basis to show you how this tool works. So what I want to do first of all is get into the edit mode. I highlight the clip. I want to adjust the speed on and click on the edit button above the timeline. Then I have five options at the very top. We're going to go to the rightmost one called speed. Now in speed I have two controls. One is uniform speed. The other one is the new one called speed presets. We'll get to that in a moment. Let's look at uniform speed. This allows you to either slow the clip down or speed it up. And it starts out with 1.00, which is normal speed. It also shows you the original duration and the new duration. And here the first number is grayed out. I wish they didn't do that. It's hard to see, but they are identical because we haven't modified it. Truth is, when we start to make it a faster clip, we will shrink the clip on the timeline. When we want to make it slower, it will get longer on the timeline. You'll see that as we work. There's also the button which by default is checked, which tends to try to keep the audio pitch normal. It will work between the range of one-tenth of, no of normal speed to ten times normal speed only. You'll have to assess that for yourself if you're using any clips, say with human voices, because that will help determine whether or not that tool is really effective. We won't deal with that in this particular tutorial, but that's the function of that checkbox. So let's use just some normal uniform speed. Let's speed it up just a little bit. So we'll make it a little faster. I can simply move the ball or I can type in a number in this box and change it to whatever I want. Let's just go 2.0. I will double it and that will give me more precision. And so I've doubled it. Now because I've doubled the speed you notice the clip size has changed. It was 2.27 now it's 1.0. Let's see what happens when we play it. And this is basically double speed. Now you can also go the opposite way. You can slow it down. You can change this to 0 0.5. And you notice the clip got a lot longer on the timeline. I basically cut the speed in half. And so when I play it, this is half speed. Now you can do this without PowerDirector 365. This is the same kind of control you could do before. But let me show you something else that you can also do. We want to reset it, and if you ever do, you just click the button in the lower left corner, and that'll turn it back to normal length and normal speed. The new tool that they want to highlight is called Speed Presets. So let's click on that and see what it offers us. What I'm going to do is make this a little wider here so we can see the controls better. It starts out and it gives you none, which is your default. You can do a custom one. We'll get into that in a moment. And then it gives you six other options that are called presets. So let's take one of the presets and just click on it and see what happens if we do montage. So here's what montage is. It gives you a sense of the way in which it works. Remember, 1.0 is normal. So from this point, and it does not give you a frame reference here. The only way I know how to do that is to click on it, and then you can look at it down here in the timeline, and you can look at your time code over below the preview screen. So here, in this case, it's 1617 at the new speed. That's where I have that marker. And then it will slowly elevate it up to this point here. It, Wherever the you click up here, or you can click down in the regular timeline to move it, and you will see the actual speed at that point in time. So here it elevates it to 6.8, which is the maximum. And then over here, it will take it and move it down to 0.3. So it goes six times normal to a third of normal. And then we click over here, and we have another one. So that is basically how these presets tend to work. Now, you can adjust the presets. The way you adjust it is simply by taking and clicking on it. 
with the left mouse button and you can move it back here. I can move this one down as well or I can even move it up and I can lower this. Maybe I don't want it at 6. Maybe I want it maybe at 3.9 and again let me see if I can type in a number. No I can't. So you're a little bit limited in precision when it comes to these when you're using these points. But it works a little bit like any any other kind of waypoint or edit point that you have elsewhere in Cyberlink PowerDirector. You notice what it did. It changed it to custom. I started with montage, but the minute I began messing with it, it changes it to a custom. We'll reset this go and go back. And we'll click back on montage, and that's my normal montage as applied to the clip. Let's, let's see what bullet does. This is bullet. So it's basically normal and then it drops down very quickly and then comes back. Let's modify it again and see if it goes back to custom. Yep, it adjusts to custom. So it says I'm building my custom. You can also click on save as. Let's try that. Let's click on save as. Let's give us a new name. Let's call this test and click on OK. Now it just added one called test. Let me right click. I can delete it if or rename it if I don't like it. I'm going to delete it in this case. So you can add your own presets if you find some that you like. Let me show you some other tools related to this screen. We also have the audio pitch that we saw on the previous screen. And we also have the duration change. Let's go back to a totally none. We'll reset it. And let's start with custom. I'll reset. Now when you start with custom and you have nothing applied to it, the clip is normal size, you haven't made no changes, and you have three buttons. Now why three? Because it has to start and stop somewhere. It's like a beginning point and end point for the time at which it will change. So if I take the middle one and move it, you're going to see what happens. Here I'm going to slow it down for this amount of time. If I want to make it slow down and speed up for less time, again I can move these closer together. And it's basically functioning a lot like keyframes would. The only downside is that you don't see the time code here. You will see it down here. So again I have to reference the time code underneath the preview screen. I could actually use a mar timeline marker here if I want to set the time codes precisely and measure it that way, but it doesn't give me that. The one thing it does do for me, it also gives me the option of magnifying or shrinking this display. So I click on the plus. Now I'm much tighter into the area, but then I have to use the button below to drag left or right to see the impact of those. So I'm going to make it smaller. It's a pretty small screen to edit in. So I tend not to want to magnify it, but if you do, you can do it this way. Let's click on Reset again. Let me show you another feature. You can combine this with any of the ups and downs of modifying it, making it slower or faster, but you also have this button here, which is interesting. This is Freeze Frame. So if I want to do a simple Freeze Frame, what I can do is I can move the, the time code here, or I can go down here if I want. Let's go to this place. And, or I can use the time code settings and type it in here. Let's go 58 and 0. Okay, that's where my playhead is now. And then I can click this button here and it will insert a freeze frame. I can say how long I want it to be, 5 seconds. Let's say we just want it 4. Press enter. And now it enters a 4 second freeze frame when I click on the apply button. And you notice my clip just got longer by 4 seconds. So when we're playing this, if we don't even want to modify fast or slow or just want to do freeze frame, we can do that. Let's play it and see what happens. And then we have 1, 2, 3, 4 roughly, and then it resumes. We'll stop that. So that's how it works. Now you can combine the freeze frame with the other controls here. I can make it freeze and then I can slow it down and then I can speed it up. 
So you have all these options when it comes to this. Again, we'll just reset it. So this is basically some of the ways in which you can modify the speed within a clip. And it's a way in which they've added a type of keyframing to it in this kind of screen with some presets that you can use and save and use again in other projects in CyberLink PowerDirector.